My name is Chantel Harris. I'm 17. Um, do you have paper? My big dream is to be an FBI agent and work at the BAU. I want to solve some cases like the John Bonnet Ramsey case. I'm going to become an FBI agent by getting good grades. Apply for colleges, the ones that have good uh, criminal justice in there, and hopefully get accepted. I live with my grandparents, with my older sibling. His name is Austin. He's 26. We lived with my grandparents. My sister lives with her boyfriend, and my younger brother, Justin, lives with my aunt. The other th four live with my dad. And my dad works in Greenville, and my mom lives in a trailer. Sometimes I get my period at school. And it's unexpected, because you don't expect it. Whenever I'm not prepared for my period, then I don't know like if I need to bring an extra pair of clothes or if I need to pack. Hey! I don't like when people know that I'm on my period. So I try to hide things, you know? And I'm sure other kids do too, because sometimes it's embarrassing. Tampons and pads are expensive. Well, I think they are. Some people that make more money than my parents do might not think so, but um, they're expensive. Well, sometimes I do hesitate about asking my parents for money for buying me tampons or pads. I feel like if I didn't go through so many, then they wouldn't have to buy them every two weeks. That would help a lot. So sometimes I just don't ask. I like to wait till like, I have like five left and then ask. And it's kind of hard. So a lot of girls struggle um, financially to afford products for their menstruation. Um, they're deciding between life necessities of eating clothing or buying pads and tampons. I have a set group of girls that I see without fail every month for every day of their cycle, or at least that beginning day where they'll come and stock up. I met Shannon from the Homeless Period Project um, right about a year ago, and she helps us make sure we have all the supplies. And I have a closet stocked of like sanitary napkins, tampons, that I can give out to my girls who may be more in need than others. This is a supply closet. Everything that Shannon had brought by, huge pack of tampons. Like this is probably, probably close to 30 bucks at the grocery store, easy. If you have to decide if you're going to eat or if you're going to have sanitary napkins, you're going to eat, you know. And then it comes to um, more baths and using paper towels and tissues and whatever you can get to serve as um, pads versus going to the store. What's popping? What you need? I need stuff. In the bathroom? Oh, yeah. Just... Nurse Joy's pretty lit because I sometimes can't afford stuff, and whenever I don't have any in my bag, then I go to Miss Robinson and I get what I need, and it helps a lot. See you later. South Carolina has a diverse group of um, people in our community. I mean, you have anywhere that are extremely wealthy, privileged, and then all the way to, um, you can take one left turn and then extreme poverty. With the Homeless Period Project, we tried to help provide those who are underprivileged and serve them wherever their needs are. All right, we need some packs for the schoolgirls. So these are our schoolgirl packs and let's, do we need some tampons for the delivery? Yes. Okay, we'll take some of those. We're off today to deliver some period packs to one of our schools who has students um, in need of these products due to living in poverty. Moms will go without, but the thought that you're so much in poverty 
and down and out that you can't afford the products for your, your child and how hurtful that must be for the, the mother, it makes me sad for the moms. This is the high school here. We'll just see if he'll, if he wants them. If not, we can bring them back. But. These packs are for you. Just please give any of the students um, what they need. Okay. That's probably going to last about a month around here. Okay. That's fine. So. Like I said, give them what they want. If they feel that they need more than one, okay. let them have it. If they have moms or older siblings at home that need them, let them they have it. Need something to take home? Yes, please. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank Thanks. you so much. So. Currently, we are averaging helping about 5,000 women and girls a month. And so it's amazing because we've done a majority of this through individual donations. I'm buying different size pads. Uh, a lot of times I buy the products and I go ahead and make period packs and I keep them in my trunk of my car so I can easily hand them out to people I see just happen by that might need them. There's a lot of trailer parks around here. When I'm driving out here and everything, my thought is how I used to live out here and thought that this was just normal, that this is what everybody lives in, this is how everybody lives. This trailer back here is um, the one that we lived in when we lived in this neighborhood here. So <laughs> it's only two bedrooms. My mom, my sister, my oldest sisters, my brother, and then me and my youngest sister. So there would have been six of us. We went to food banks, things like that for food. I remember us not being able to afford pads or, or anything for our periods for that matter. Um, because like my mom was working, she couldn't take care of all of us being a single mom. We would use toilet paper. I remember like taking it and wadding it, going all the way down the length of my hand. When I think about the word dignity, especially as a young girl, you don't have a lot of it when you have to worry about whether your blood's going to be out where everybody can see it or, or even having to ask for products as those because it, it embarrasses you or it just, you feel like you have to hide away. a really huge difference between where I was at then and where I am now, just in all aspects of my life. Oh, goodness. Do you know what it is tomorrow? Most people, they don't realize how big the spread of need for feminine products is in our communities. Um, it's everyday life, it's everyday struggles that young girls in our community have. You know, it's not like I grew up and all of a sudden it went away. Now let me share how we got started. Stephanie was a genius, read this article in Huffington Post, <laughs> and it was talking about women in the UK and the struggles that their homeless women were having surrounding their periods and access to these products. I was blown away and never thought about what women do when they have their period and they're homeless. So the need is great. It doesn't just stop with our homeless. It doesn't just stop with our women living in poverty. It is also with our schoolgirls. We're going to put seven pads and seven liners in each Ziploc. We usually put 50 in each bag. This is exactly the stuff that would have helped me when I was growing up. Um, 
It's really amazing to be standing here and knowing all this is helping to benefit young girls or in, in the community, just around. My goal for the girls of this school would be that if they need anything, they can go and ask any member of this school and they can serve as a resource to get them what they need without feeling ashamed or embarrassed or like they're less than. I mean, there's nothing worse than looking down, having blood stains on your pants and feeling like you did something wrong. I'm very much dependable on the supplies here at school. Sometimes I'll take extra to go home with me. And it helps.